Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 2. We are going to see instruction types and we are going to see various types of notations to represent that instructions. Okay, so this is very important concept in unit 2 and very simple as well. And if you understand the logic, you can write by your own. Right. So we will see what are the different types of instruction. There are different types of instruction like three, three address instruction, two address instruction, one address instruction and zero address instruction. And similarly, there are a lot of general instructions as well. OK, so we'll see all the types of instruction in this particular video. OK, and before starting with, well, you know, what is instruction? Right. Instruction is is a command to the microprocessor to perform any particular given task. OK. And instruction set is nothing but a group of instruction. You know that computer will work based upon the instructions which is stored in the memory, correct? So that particular instruction will be an instruction set. That is a group of instruction. A program is a group of instruction, right? And we can also call it as an instruction set, okay? And what is meant by instruction sequencing? Like this is the number of instruction. That is, if you say this is a program, it is a group of instructions, correct? Right? And we can also say it as an instruction set. Okay, and this single instruction is called as single command is called as instruction and this group of instruction is called as instruction set and what is instruction sequencing is if the processor, right, process the instruction one by one, right, in the same order, that is called as instruction sequencing, okay, that is we will be executing the instructions one by one in the, in the computer, okay, and if you take any particular computer, four types of basic operation is needed, okay. That is, whenever we know that the processor performs all the operation, but it needs any information, it needs any data or any operand, it will collect it from the memory. Correct? So, the four important operation is data transfer between memory and processor register, arithmetic and logical operation, program sequencing, that is one by one the program has to execute, right? Program sequencing and control, and then I.O. transfer, that is input-output transfer. Okay, we have already seen all these things in unit 1 itself. Okay, but remember this, this is the four very important operation that is needed for any computer. Okay, right. Now, we will see what is, before going to see various types of instruction formats, you understand, now you know what is instruction. And instruction format is, you have specified format for each and every instruction. Okay. There are common fields for instruction. That is, you have an operation field, you have something called address field, and you have mode field. Okay. Operation field is something which specifies the operation, whether it is an addition, whether it is a multiplication, division, like that, right? Which operation it has to perform. That is represented by this operation field. An address field is contain the location of the operand, right? Where that particular operand is located. Okay. And there is something called mode field which is specifies how to find the operand, right? By looking at various different instructions, you will understand there are for each and every instructions, the uh, identifying the operand will be a different, okay? We will see that in, in, in next videos, okay? So these are the three fields which is common for instruction formats, okay? So we'll see what are the different types of instructions, but before that, there is two important notations that you have to concentrate, that is, Registry transfer notation and assembly language notation, right? RTN and ALN, okay? RTN is register transfer notation and ALN is assembly language notation, okay? As I said before, like whenever there, the very important operation in computer is transfer from one particular peripheral to another particular peripheral, right? From memory to processor or processor to memory. This is very, very important, right? This transfer of information or transfer of data can occupy in various locations. That is, it can access in memory location and it can happen in processor register. That is, inside the processor, you will have some registers, right? Uh, that is processor register, right? And it can be from I.O. device, right? That is input-output device, like that, or from the memory itself, right? Like this, the transfer of data can be from various locations, okay? And... For each and every locations, there will be a specific way to represent each and every location, right? There will be a specific name. For example, for memory locations, it will be represented like this, LOC, place, MEM, like this. And for processor register, it will be represented like R1, R2. 
right and for io registers it will be represented as data in data out like that right so each and every locations can be identified by this uh, peculiar name right a peculiar representation okay now we will see what is register transfer notation okay from the name itself we can understand but right? before seeing that you can see this example register transfer notation is nothing but if you see this particular instruction right what does it mean right we got to locate n that is we have to move this particular information n right the, in the, the in this particular location the n location has to be moved to r register that the information in the location n has to be moved to r2 right this is r t n that is register transfer notation okay and there is another instruction you can see here this is r1 plus r2 and r3 what does it mean we have to add r1 and r2 content of r1 and content of r2 is added and it is moved to r3 okay now this way of representing the instruction is called as register transfer notation okay the right hand side that is this side will have the values right if you can see that this is the value which has to be located in r2 and this is the value which we have to add so it will have values so it will be represented using square brackets okay and the one which is on the left hand side which is used to store the information okay right so that is register transfer notation you can see here rhs of the rtn always have the values it is the source right and lhs always denotes the symbolic name where the information has to be stored okay the source content will not be modified okay right but the destination even if if, if r2 has any other information before right now when it is moved the, this particular instruction as per this instruction the content of the n will be overwritten in r2 so whatever information which is having in r2 will be gone similarly by adding an r2 and r3 it will be stored in r3 right that is whatever information which is present in r3 it will be overwritten okay but the information at the right hand side will be preserved that is called as register transfer notation okay and the next one is assembly language notation assembly language notation this is another format right like register notation you can see here in register notation we have represented in this particular manner right the same operation that is moving the content of n to r2 and r1 plus r2 saving to r3 right the same instruction you can you can represent using assembly language notation that is by using single instruction on single command right by giving a single command the operation will be performed that is called as assembly language notation you can see here move the location n to r1 right this is source and destination you will understand for any particular instruction most of the computers will follow source and destination right that is first will be source and the later will be destination okay for any address or any particular instruction this is the format but there are computers which also use destination and source but the normal way is source and destination okay and similarly in uh, register notation what we have seen is we have seen r1 plus r2 will be saved in r3 right now this operation can be written in a single command using assembly language notation you can see here this is a single command right that is adding r1 and r2 and placing it in r3 right adding r1 and r2 and placing it in r3 that is the explanation for this particular instruction right now we can understand how is that we are saying we got to add this to and saving in this particular r3 right you will have a question like that right that's because this is a three order three address instruction okay you will see what is three address instruction right before that depending upon the address now you can see here we have three locations here right three operands right so it is a three address instruction right so depending upon the number of addresses the instructions can be of different types okay so it can be called zero address instruction or one address instruction two address instruction or three address instruction okay as i said this is a three address instruction right and we say that we got to add r1 and r2 and save it in r3 right eppadi sir solreenga r1 r2 da add pannano r1 r2 add panni eppadi r3 ya save pannano because this is a three address instruction in three address instruction the structure is operation source 
source 2 and destination. So, whichever comes first to will be source 1 and source 2. So, we have to add this 2 and the third one will be destination. That is why it adds R1 and R2 and save it in R3. Right. You can see here. Right. So, this is the 3 address instruction. Okay. That is adding A plus B and saving it in C. Okay. That is the same instruction which I said here. R1, R2 and saving it in R3. Okay. Now, you can see this is the structure of three address instructions. Source 1, source 2 and then destination. So, A is source 1, B is source 2 and C is destination. Right. To make it very clear, just understand this particular expression. Right. So, that is C is equal to A plus B. What does it mean? We got to add the content of A and B and save it in C. Okay. If you are using high level language program, right, high level language program, for, for example, if you are using a C language, what you will do, you will represent three variables, right, that is A, B and C, you will represent three variables, right, while writing the program, initially you will represent three variables and these three variables will be stored in the memory location, right, and whenever you call this particular variable, right, then it refers to that particular Content. For example, if A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20 and C is equal to 30, then it represents that particular 10. And whenever you call B, it represents 20. Right. That is the memory allocation in high level language. Correct. That is you will represent the variable and every time when you want that particular variable, you can call that variable from the memory. Correct. Similarly, here the same operation. Now the same operation can be written in a single instruction right that is add a plus b and save it in c that is here right and this is called three address instruction because we are using three address okay even though here the greatest disadvantage is there right even though here by using a single instruction you perform the operation the main drawback is for example you are using three operands here right if you need k bits to represent this particular operand and you represent uh, this with k bit and you, re you require this with k bit, right? So, you will need 3 k bits to represent this particular instruction without counting this add, okay? So, number of instruction, that is, number of bits required will be more, okay? And similarly, since it is a 3 address instruction, it will be very long, okay? So, it cannot be saved in a single word, right? Any instruction has to be saved in a single word. This three address instruction cannot be saved in a single word, right? Then what is the solution for it? We can go for, we can try for two address instruction, right? What is two address instruction? And before seeing that two address instruction, we will also see another example here, okay? Another example that is, you can see here, add DEF. As I said, D E and place the D plus E and save the information in F, okay? That is, even though it performs single instruction, single instruction, with single instruction, it performs the complete operation, the instruction will be too large. Okay. And the same method, you can see here any particular expression, you can see here any particular expression can be easily represented in three address instruction. You can see here A plus B into C plus D. Right. Which means here what we are going to do, we are going to add A, B and save it in R1. That is, A, add A comma B and save it in R1. So, this is completed, correct? And similarly, we can save this information in R2. That is, add C and D and save it in R2. Right, that is what happening here. That is, add C and D and save it in R2. Add A and B, save it in R1. Now, R1 is having this particular expression and R2 is having this particular instruction. Right, then up, uh, in center you will have multiplication. Okay, so now, multiply R1, R2 and save it in X. Okay, so any complex expression can be easily done, easily represented or easily executed using three address instruction. Okay, even though it is simple, single instruction, but the main drawback is you cannot save it in a single word. Okay, so for that what we can do is we can go for two address instruction, right? Thank you students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, useful subscribe passionate professor and keep learning thank you very much